Today I'm walking you through my off-camera kit for wedding photography. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the studio today. I'm going to walk you through everything that I use or everything that I, I guess is on the peripheries of what I would typically use on a wedding day. Uh, I try to be as minimal as possible and my first step to being minimal is actually having my flash on camera until I absolutely need to bring it off camera. Uh, on camera flash, I can usually get away with. I'm always bouncing it. There's gonna be a number of examples within this video. I'm usually bouncing it off of something else. I'm never using it direct. Same with off camera. And the reason that I bring in off camera flash is when either the quality of light or the distance from the light to my subject becomes just impossible for me to actually use an on camera flash for. So an example of that on a wedding day is that if the couple is up at the podium giving a speech and I have my flash on my camera, I'm gonna have to be really close to them if I'm trying to counter for the quality of light that they're currently in. And that might mean that I am in front of all of their family and friends and I am now the center of attention. The photographer just blasting his flash off and I don't really want that to be the case. So what I will do in a situation like that is I'll actually set my off-camera flash up nice and close to my subject and then I'll be back on a 7200 or something at the back of the room. And I find that that's a lot less distracting. Uh, because of, I guess, my mindset and outlook on this that I don't want to just completely take over the scene, when I am using off-camera flash, I, I don't want to be setting up a softbox. Like, it would be very distracting. The couple's speaking. I'm, I'm here, I'm talking to you at the, I'm at the podium. And there's a softbox right here, and it's maybe blocking the view of a few people. It just becomes the center of what people are actually focused on. So it's not the most ideal situation. I am always finding creative ways to light a room without actually bringing in heavy modifiers. Usually that means bouncing off a wall or finding a, a piece of even just kind of neutral gray or something that I'm able to bounce off of naturally. Sometimes that might mean that I have to turn my flash up a little bit and make it a little bit more intense uh, to, to make a shot like that work, but I've always found solutions in rooms. And we'll talk about some more advanced solutions to problems, uh, specifically one problem that if you're ever just in a barn that's just wood everywhere, that it's really difficult to off camera light it. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through kind of our approach to that towards the end of this video. So to walk you through the actual gear that I use, I am using a Godox or Godox V1. Uh, if you are purchasing this, make sure you're purchasing the, the little tiny C here is for Canon. So if you're a Nikon shooter, uh, make sure you get the one that says N or a Sony shooter, make sure you get the one that says S. And again, on camera, balances nicely. Uh, the thing that I like the most, I guess I would say about this flash is one that um, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but when you get off camera that everything just kind of works really easily. The other thing I like is this huge lithium ion battery and the recharge time on it is pretty much instant. If you're doing full pops, I think it's, um, it's maybe a couple of seconds, but I would say on a usual wedding, I'm never really above one slash fourth power. And at one fourth power, you can shoot as many frames as you want. The main controller that I use, so as soon as this flash comes off camera, I'm using this X2T, again, with a tiny little C for Canon, so that they, essentially so you get your TTL coverage. Um, I think that you can use an off-camera one, so if I'm using the Nikon version of this on my Canon camera, I can probably do manual uh, settings, but obviously best case, purchase it for what you want. Um, also, in regards to expenses, the Godox kit is pretty inexpensive, all things considered. Uh, with this, you can actually, this is very much overkill. Uh, I almost want a more simple, just like, hey, control one flash, that's all I really need. I don't need to set up groups. As you can see here, you have a lot of different buttons, so you can be setting up different groups of flashes. So if you have 10, 15 of these around the room, you can be putting them in different groups, and if the couple goes over here, now all of a sudden you can switch to group B and you can be using your flashes over there. That's a lot more advanced than I ever find myself in on an actual wedding day. Uh, what I like about this, though, is that I can control the intensity of my flash with this little wheel at the bottom here. So I am just selecting that, like, hey, talk to this flash here, and then moving this wheel and on the back of this wirelessly, it is changing the intensity. And for the most part, that's really all I do. Um, you might have just heard me speak the fact that I'm usually shooting manual everything. On wedding days, you can absolutely be shooting TTL if you want, but I find that I am always trying to hide my flash. So basically, if I walk into a room and I don't want the flash to overpower everything and just look like it's a straight up flash shot, so I'm always kind of hiding this in the background or bouncing it in a way that looks natural to the scene. And because of that, typically, I just set that up to be a manual setting and I figure out what it needs to be. And it's not really that complex. You just do a few test shots and, and something works and you leave it there. Uh, I find this a lot better for post-production too, for wedding days, that if you're lighting a podium and you're doing so many photos, if you're on TTL and you're moving around the room, there might be a chance that things get brighter, darker, more intense, less intense. Uh, 
uh, and if you're actually just have everything locked down, including your camera settings, that just becomes a lot easier to edit in post-production. Now moving beyond just the simple on-camera slash off-camera flash, uh, these all talk to each other as well, so this controller will work with this flash and this flash here that we'll talk about in a second. This is the Godox AD100 Pro, and if you're a wedding photographer, I would say that this would be a great addition to your kit uh, that go with the, the actual on-camera, off-camera first. And then if you want a specific off-camera flash, uh, this little pop can here is an incredible tool for a wedding day. So moving beyond the AD100, if you are somebody that uses off-camera flash a lot in a studio environment, you might want a flash unit that's even more powerful than, than just this guy here. Uh, this AD200 Pro would be my recommendation for that. Uh, very fast recycle time. Uh, even if you're outside doing full one-to-one -one pops on this, like full power bursts, uh, you can actually, I think I'll put the refresh time on the screen, but it's incredibly fast. So you can actually do that. You can overpower the sun. You can do whatever you want. Um, if you are somebody that uses this a lot in a studio, I would recommend this simply because of the additional power in it, as well as the fact that you can get a different heads as well. So if you're interested in going to something like a bare bulb head, um, where you can actually put this on, you take this guy off and you put this on. And then if you are using modifiers in the studio, you have a few different ways to use them and to create different light. Um, also the attachments just come with it. Um, we didn't yet speak about the gels that you can get for uh, the V1, but it comes with a variety of gels as well as uh, things like this. There's a lot of modifiers. I don't use a whole lot of them on a wedding day. If you are interested in more studio style tips, maybe let me know and I can do a video of that in the future. So this usually just stays in here. This can even be a backup of a backup. It can stay in your car. Um, maybe just be careful if it's a hot day. Don't want that battery in there. Uh, this is what I'll bring with me to wedding day. In the back here, I actually have the, the foot. So a lot of the time actually on a wedding day, if specifically for getting ready photos, I find that I just use this tiny little foot a lot of the time. I'm not actually bringing in a flash stand yet, uh, that I just have this kind of set up somewhere to get a little bit more light onto my scene. Um, the, I guess the fortunate part, at least with hair and makeup, usually the hair and makeup artist will have them looking towards good light, so you'll have good light there. What I do struggle with sometimes is getting into the room with, say, trying to do a photo of the dress or uh, if the guys are getting ready in a hotel room or something like that. It becomes a little bit challenging. Putting this up in the top corner of the room somewhere on a dresser, don't forget it though, uh, and just running with this transmitter uh, makes your light a lot better or fills in gaps where the light just, if it falls off drastically, kind of coming away from the window if it's a very dark room. The attachments, as I mentioned, and as I'll show you in the actual video, uh, you can get a CTO gel. CTO is fancy three letter acronym for color temperature orange. Uh, you can get different intensities of orange as well. The one that I use is just a standard CTO gel and I also have one for fluorescent lights as well. So if I walk into a room and it's a very warm lit environment that the sun is down and all these lights are on, I'm going to put that gel to match my flash with the color of the lights in the room. Same goes if I walk into a fluorescent lit environment that I can put that green gel on. Um, I will also mention that sometimes if I walk into those environments, I don't actually match my flash with what's going on in the room, that that's not always necessary. And if you really wanna create like a nice spotlight or if you have really good quality of light really close to somebody, and again, maybe they're on a podium or it's their first dance, you can kind of make an acting spotlight on them. So the rest of the room is a little bit more orange, a little bit more warm, and the focus is kind of brought to the couple or the person uh, with the light. So that's something to think about that all these rules are just kind of what, what I've learned that you can go out and you can figure out what kind of looks the best to you. The additional cool thing with the V1 as well as um, the AD100 Pro is that everything is magnet. So the, the gels that you'll get are just kind of magnet clip on. Uh, what we have here is a bit of just kind of a diffusion cup. If you walk into a room and it's a smaller room and you want to light up the entire room, you can actually use this diffuser cup, I guess. Uh, another thing you can do is you can get, uh, it's called a kind of a bounce card and you get actually a piece of paper. You can use an index card with a uh, rubber band if you if you want to get real, real cheap on it. Uh, Godox does actually make them and it's basically a white piece that goes like this. So while you are shooting most of the light towards the ceiling and you're getting that nice bounce light, uh, some of it will also be going forward to kind of fill in, um, usually it's kind of under eyes as well as actually getting light into people's eyes if you are if you have a really high ceiling. The last thing to talk about here is my uh, beautiful newer, newer uh, stands. I buy the cheapest stands that I can because I leave them at so many weddings. I probably lose on an average wedding season if I'm photographing 60 weddings, I probably leave 10 stands at weddings accidentally. They're just not the thing that I think about, so I don't spend a lot of money on them. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you want these stands. They're not the best quality, but they, they, they'll they hold your light up and they get they get high enough. There you go. I never really need to get much higher than something like this. If I have to get higher than that, usually there's a balcony or there's somewhere that I can kind of put my flash to, to make sure that it gets up high and kind of out of people's eyes. Another thing to think about is that when people are seated, if your flash is 
about here, all they're gonna see is this flash going off, but if you get it slightly above their eye line and you're bouncing off the ceiling, they're not even really gonna see it. They're gonna see this, the ceiling light up, but it's not gonna be something that's distracting in their eyes. And it's especially important if you're putting that flash stick in between important guests of the wedding and also the people speaking. Uh, so it's not just the constant distraction as I spoke to with uh, lack of modifiers. So those are my gears for the, the off-camera flashes. Now we're actually going to go to a few different wedding days and I'm going to walk you through my process. A lot of it is problem solving and everything is different, uh, but I will say after you've done troubleshooting at maybe five, six, seven weddings, you've probably encountered most of the struggles that you'll ever encounter. Uh, and by that point, you're just kinda, you'll, you'll be fine to walk into any room and, and know exactly what you need to do. So on to the wedding days. Welcome to a variety of examples. We are starting here at a reception, which is typically where I would be using my off-camera flash the most. And I'm getting it kind of close to the elements that I want to photograph. So in this case, I want to photograph uh, not Marshall, but the flowers behind him. It's kind of, the light wasn't really on you or intended for you. Easily could have gotten away with not using off-camera flash, but by using an off-camera flash or even just one single flash at a lower power, it really does help make things a lot more uh, three-dimensional and just a lot better of an image overall. So if you have the couple seconds uh, with the Godox, this system, the V1 and the, the X-Pro controller, everything just works all the time. So there's no troubleshooting. So the setup process is like just a couple of seconds rather than with pocket wizards and stands. It used to take me a long time. Uh, now I'm a lot more apt to just like put that out of my bag, put it on the desk here or the table here and uh, get that shot off. Uh, I'm also zooming this in so that I'm, uh, I know that at some point now, uh, I'm gonna be shooting this kind of at the ceiling around people. And I would rather not have the kind of full bleed into people's eyes that I would rather just kind of shoot it just off the spot that I wanted to hit. Setting up my off-camera flash here, I'm trying to integrate it into the floral, I guess. Uh, I just wanted it kind of close to the head table so that I could get everybody at the head table in perfect lighting as well as anyone at the podium and as well as family that's like super close there. And again, I've zoomed my flash in so that it's not going to be like too distracting, that it really is just shooting kind of straight at the ceiling there. Uh, if you would even like want to put a snoot around it to make sure that there isn't anything just like super distracting, uh, that's also a possibility as well, but you'll just really limit the beam. Uh, when it hits the ceiling. Quality of light here is actually really good um, with this single off camera flash. I'm super happy with it. It's a pretty strange dinner setup they've given us tonight. One chair here, one chair here, the table. But quality sound. What's in your uh, goodie bag here, Marshall? Oh, we got the pretzels. Ooh. Not gluten free. We got veggie kit. It's kind of like a, a build your own dip kit. I do appreciate that. Apple for dessert. Come and eat that. Today we were gonna do some sunset photos, but we didn't really get a sunset, so I set up my flash as a backlight and uh, that yeah. looks great. And I might have you guys, um, do you wanna just hold hands and you can just kinda walk towards me here? That's great. And you can kinda look at each other like you've been doing, or even put an arm around each other now that you're bustled, you can get a little closer. Okay, that's kind of the path then. <laughs> this is me dropping my flash stick off on lowest power. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna have you guys, if you wanna start kind of like right about here, I'm just gonna have you kind of walking this way here. On the grass in? Yeah, so just kind of follow this little like kind of line here. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't go that way, that way's a trap. <laughs> All right, that looks good. And same deal, you can kind of look at each other and... Perfect. That looks incredible. All right, just that tiny little bit of light really does make the image a lot better and more three-dimensional rather than just kind of being them in the background. There's kind of a third element that's coming into it uh, and I like it a lot. So I've set my flash back up kind of at the front of the table there and I'm gonna weave my way in between everybody, um, which is always fun and awkward. And right now uh, I'm kind of using the flash almost to make the head table and to make the podium great quality light and then everything else is a little bit darker um, so that I'm able to kind of frame throughout that. But just this quality of light from like this angle right here, this is also my favorite angle because they're always looking at the couple. So uh, it makes it a lot easier to photograph and get real reactions. So I'm gonna have this at like minimum power. Yeah. And if you just wanna kind of backlight them from like kind of over the shoulder like this. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm super wide, but I'm gonna be like this. And then if you're just kind of like off there. More than 45, yeah. Yeah, so just like putting like right the back of their heads. Yeah. All right, this is not a session that I usually get to do. This weird dark, it's a lot darker in real life than it looks like right now. The clouds are starting to roll in and it really is gonna be uh, quite a storm in a moment. All right, so I'm gonna have you guys out on the grass here. Let's test it out for you first. Hmm. Might even say if you're just even like kind of right here. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that looks so good already. <laughs> hmm. Is it? Yeah. Not one twenty-eighth. How about now? All right, and if you guys just want to get really close to each other and just, uh, these will be like the, and you can kind of look at each other and even if you want to kind of get really, really close together. Marsha, you can come up kind of just over here. And even if you want to rotate a little more, sorry. <laughs> that looks so good. And if you want to move this hand, just kind of like up on her shoulder. Me? Yeah. Um, other hand, so we'll, oh, yeah, yeah, if you I want to. Silly, sorry that I'm like <laughs> remarkably closer to you guys than I usually am. That's okay. <laughs> ah, perfect. I like it. All right. All right, cool. And um, Marshall, if you want to, right about there is probably good. So good. Perfect. Amazing. All right. That was great. I love that natural light fall off down to the bottom left corner, uh, a reason that I love Nikon lenses. Crazy. Lady. How's the sunset photo session? Yeah, crazy lightning session. Should we do lightning photos? Ooh. This is a live meme of me every single time I've ever tried to take lightning photos. There it goes. Fuck it. <laughs> I told you this is a pre-flash before it goes. As soon as I point the camera at you. Where is that one? That was on the other side of this tree. Man, I can't be out here too long. One day I'll photograph lightning. Uh, what I was speaking to earlier in this video that you can match your, uh, your flash to the actual room lights, or you can just run it without a gel and do, uh, an effect more like this, where it's more of a highlight kind of in that area. Everyone else is a little more warm. That's a tool. You can use it or you cannot use it. It's completely up to you and your taste. Now moving into another wedding day and another use of off-camera flash. So basically what I'm doing is I am exposing for the entire scene. So I want this entire scene there in the vehicle and without an off-camera flash, they would just be in the darkness. And you can rely a little bit maybe on your dynamic range of your camera to bring them up. But to add a little bit of light to the scene, you're gonna add actual natural uh, saturations and a lot of other dimension to an image that you just couldn't build in post-production. So again, I'm shooting manually and I'm just doing a number of different test images to see kind of what looks the best to me. Uh, I know that this image is going to look pretty much the most off camera lit image that I would ever probably deliver to a couple. Um, but again, kind of went into that image knowing that that's what the look was going to be. Now we're back in a new reception and a bit of a more challenging reception. What I'm actually doing is just bouncing my light off of the wall that you see beside me. So there's a, a, a door for the actual garage that's really the only white surface. But by amping my flash up a little bit and sending that light back into the scene, I'm actually able to kind of light up the entire environment how I would want. Um, there's also a garage door that's up over top. So again, looking for those weird opportunities uh, in order to kind of make my life a little bit easier. And maybe one more thing to think about is that off-camera flash is in fact a tool. It is sometimes the best tool for the job, sometimes it is not. In this specific case, we're going out to do a star photo and an off-camera flash would literally just be way too powerful. So this is what the sky looks like right now, uh, just by a simple image. And I'm actually gonna light the couple with my iPhone rather than actually using an off-camera flash. So while well, you might be thinking like, oh, I need to figure this out, I need to light them with a softbox and I need to set all this stuff up, 
And you can get really deep into it, but at the end of the day, you can make the same image you're after with a much simpler tool just by doing a little bit of light painting. Here we are at a new wedding day with a new use case for off-camera flash. Uh, when I have time, so for instance, when I'm in the getting ready photos and I need to do a ring shot, uh, all circumstances are different. I don't have like a studio that I can just easily bring this ring to to quickly shoot it. So I have to figure out kind of how the light reacts and what elements I also have. You can bring backdrops with you if you want. If you want to do uh, flat lays, you can actually bring mats with you. I personally kind of enjoy whatever elements I can find. So in this case, it is the invitation. It is the envelope for the invitation that I'm using. And I'm kind of experimenting with a few different lighting scenarios. I'm bouncing it off the ceiling right now, and I'm going to bounce it off the wall. And then eventually I'm going to actually just directly light it on the ring. Uh, definitely don't just do this to people, like don't point a flash directly at them. But uh, with a ring, I feel like it actually ended up working out really, really well. And it wasn't something that I tried. So make sure that you're always experimenting or doing a few experimenting shots with your off-camera flash, uh, especially if it's something like the getting ready section of the day where you have lots of time to do something like that. Also, maybe where if you don't know where you're doing getting ready photos, maybe maybe wear better socks than I wore this day. That might be a nice thing for you if you have to take your shoes off. If you don't you don't feel embarrassed? I felt a little embarrassed this day. So here it is, flash head very close. I feel like good lighting is just basically getting the light source as close to the, usually it's a person, but in this case, getting the light source as close to the ring as possible, I feel like just makes a better image overall. And just experimenting again by manual controls and figuring out what works, what looks good. And in the case of a ring, sometimes you're gonna have to kind of find the middle ground and you have to know that you're gonna fix it a little bit in post-production. Uh, but again, maybe that's one, two, three shots out of your entire gallery. So I think that's totally fine and that was a lot of lead up for the for this image that's it's it's good it's it's i'm happy with it but it's not it's not changing changing anyone's lives but it's it's nice that's all let's go to the next next scene so I had a lot of time here, actually. I, I had way more time than I would usually have uh, just due to the uncertainties of weddings that you kind of plan the best you can. Sometimes you have more time. So I'm just trying some new and interesting things. I'm seeing how it's going to look if I bounce this light off of this wall and back onto the shoes. And I'll quickly discover that it's not the, it's not the shot that I want. But it really does come back to just kind of playing with and experimenting with off-camera light. That the more you do that, the more you learn how to troubleshoot troublesome scenes when you actually arrive on them. You need to be able to do them and you need to be able to make those decisions maybe very quickly. That you walk into a reception room, you have five minutes to set up and where are you going to put your light? Where are you going to put your lights? Uh, so this kind of maybe helps out a little bit in that and makes you a little bit more comfortable and more confident with it. Um, again, I'm just kind of failing at everything here. Nothing really looks Looks great and I'm eventually going to do the same thing that I did with the ring that I'm going to get that flash a little bit closer to the actual shoes again smaller objects closer flash just kind of makes it a little bit better uh, I'm going to say that it makes it a lot more dramatic in this case and you'll see that in a moment so in the case of off-camera lighting, I feel like there's a lot of experimentation that goes into it. I feel like in weddings, it obviously like you can now create anything. If somebody sends you like this weird, like, hey, we'd love to do a photo like this. Now, all of a sudden, you have some of the tools or you can get kind of close within a couple of shots. Uh, what it is even more beneficial for is commercial photography. And knowing that when, when you go into a scene that you have to create something that's very specific and conveys a very specific brand image, that now all of a sudden you have more tools to be able to create that. Uh, obviously, you're going to bring in larger modifiers for the for the lights and everything during that time. But it's nice to know what you can do just with a simple flash unit. Uh, this was the shot that I ended up liking the most that I involved the rings with the shoes. Again, had a lot of time here, so very happy to create a lot of images. Getting that light nice and close, actually hand-holding the light stand. Again, you don't really need a light stand for... A lot of this that if you just have that shoe and you can just put it on the on the couch if you're trying to for instance light hair and makeup or you could just hold it in your hand literally what i'm doing right here uh, and easily create that shot all right now moving into another use case for off-camera flash and one that i don't typically do that if you're looking to create something that looks a lot more editorial a lot more magazine style uh, this is the way to do it and by basically placing, so I have one flash on a stick in the middle of the room right now, I will eventually move up behind the bride to add a little bit more three-dimensionality to the image. Uh, but by adding that extra light, 
it really does make that specific the the subject that you're aiming that light on i'm aiming the light by bouncing it off the ceiling and and back down on her by doing that you're really creating something that feels a lot better than just a natural image that a natural image shot here would be great it'd be fine i would usually do it but something like that you can see how the spotlight comes down upon them uh very naturally and you can process that however you want if you want to bring that in even more extreme or less extreme uh you have the ability to but by having the light and by having the actual saturation and you don't have to rely too much on the file you can really create an incredible scene uh, if you have the time to do this uh, now i'm setting up the flash kind of at a 45 degree angle behind where i'm actually going to go so i'm going to go across um, the dance floor and and way around here and i'm actually going to try to find at least the best i can find some natural frames to kind of frame this in i feel like when you're spotlighting or quote unquote spotlighting somebody like this it is important to find some sort of element that kind of frames that to add some kind of darkness in the foreground. Uh, I'm kind of using the dance floor right now, but I'm looking for something that's a little bit better. So I'm basically just uh, I, one of the benefits of off camera flash that my scene is lit. I am now free to go anywhere I kind of want in the room. Uh, by the way, that's the flash, the Godox flash that I had before the V1. I'll just get the V1 now. Don't worry about whatever flash that was, the V2. 862 or something. Uh, so now I've kind of found the scene that I want to frame this within these foreground elements from the table, the floral, the, the chairs. So I'm going to kind of move around a little bit in this space and figure out what feels the best to me. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is shoot wide angle images with an 85 millimeter quote unquote telephoto lens. And this image would not have existed without that off camera flash spotlighting the scene and the natural frame the, did I say natural frame? I'm sorry. Photographer TJ6-3.7. Let's begin. Ready? Yes, sir. Reset your baseline. A system of frames of the yellow mirror list began to spin. A system of frames interlink within frames interlink within frames interlink within one stem. Frames dreadfully distinct against the dark. Frames. frames. Does your camera make frames? Frames. Frames. Do you use natural frames? Frames. Frames. Interlinked. Interlinked. Are technology and creative interlinked? Interlinked. Interlinked. Japan and photography are interlinked? Interlinked. Interlinked. Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. Why don't you say that three times? Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. We're done. You can pick up your mirrorless. Thank you. And as close as everyone can get together, the better. And maybe anger yourself in just a little bit more. That's good there. And my flash is a little too overpowered when you start to see it kind of leaking through like that and actually making shadows because now it is more people in the scene. Uh, I don't really like that. So let's dial that back down a little bit and try it again. This looks fantastic. All right, that's a little more balanced. And again, you can see kind of that small little tiny outline that's almost turning into a purple fringe a little bit. Uh, that's because of this lens. And when you shoot it wide open and you get those harsh contrast points, you start to see a little bit of purple. <laughs> you, learn to, you learn to work with it and you learn to see when it's gonna happen and um, mitigate the, uh, the purple fringe. And at a time that off-camera flash and being able to just create kind of a mock studio environment just with a single light, like this uh, really does come in handy is when you're photographing anyone with a bald head because if we're out in the bright sun today I really do have to do my best to find shade um, or her dad's head's gonna be quite uh, quite a different uh, shade of just pure white um, but by doing that inside here and doing the family photos in this room setting up that one light to make things just look a little bit better and a little bit more professional overall is definitely the best thing you can do with your time. I'm always capitalizing whenever there's good light and good things going on, whether that is for candids or whether that is for family photos. If I have everyone there, I'm going to do it is when, when I'm in a good situation. And because we do still have a little bit of time, I'm going to do a few more photos and just kind of experiment and turn the flash power up a lot more than it was before and create even more of a spotlight kind of in the center of that floor from behind. Pop. As you can see, still pretty balanced, but a lot more light coming in from behind and kind of getting on that veil. It almost looks a little bit like a skylight or something coming in. So recreating light that should exist in the scene or could potentially exist in the scene, I feel like is always the way to go by just creating like if I was to just put two flashes right like on over her left and right shoulder and just point them right back at the camera. That might look like a cool image, but I feel like it's not a very wedding photography appropriate image. Or there is a time for it if you're doing dances and whatever, um, like in the actual dance party section that you can do a lot more flashes into the camera. But for just typical wedding day, I try to minimize and I try to create lighting that should exist 
in the real world. Uh, as you can see, I'm putting both my flashes on slave mode now. I have one. I'm actually going to move this to the other side, pointed kind of at the back of the head of whoever is presenting at one slash 128th power and then my front flash here that's just in the middle of the dance floor is at uh, 1 slash 64 power and as you can see the backlight kind of just making a little bit more three-dimensionality and the front light keeping everything nice and clean for lighting because the lighting in here with these lights is very very challenging moving into dancing I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my typical off-camera light setup Usually I'm just using one light and for instance in this room I would probably be bouncing it off of this gray wall or off of this ceiling and trying to get some sort of horizontal light. So it might be like the, the typical thing to have your flash on top of your camera and to point it straight at the ceiling but all that light's going to come down from the ceiling and it just looks, I don't know, as a photographer I can see when people are using that style of bounce. What I would prefer is to point a light maybe off of this wall here so that all the light comes in kind of horizontally into the scene and it adds a lot more depth and dimension into the actual image. Today I'm actually using two lights which is very rare for me and essentially what I'm doing is one, I'm just getting kind of the overall coverage of the scene to make everybody look good and then with my second light I'm kind of pointing it directly at the scene to just add a little bit of hot spots and to make it look a little bit more like a dance party and a little less like a studio overall. There is no right or wrong way to off-camera light a dance party style reception. Um, it's just all about kind of what personal taste you like. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, or at least re the the most rewarding and kind of fun thing, uh, and when you when you nail one of the shots, it's it's really really it's really, really nice, um, is when you actually are shooting directly into your flash. So you have, you're on the side of the dance floor, or for instance, like basically my flash is this blue light over here. And if I'm like this and I'm just moving away and I'm getting that nice like starburst directly into the lens while I'm standing where the camera is pointed right back. Um, when you get that nice starburst, it's very, it's a nice image to get, it's fun to do, but I don't think that you should tailor your entire style um, of off-camera lighting to just those direct lights and flashes because it's um, it's very very intense and it's very um, I feel like it's a very one one shot and you're kind of done that as soon as you get that shot It's good that it's probably um, I guess another thing is that it never really ended up in the album uh, When I used to make albums I would take the selects and those images that I was like yeah nailed it They're gonna love it never actually ended up in the album So um, that was kind of my like yeah, maybe they're not as cool as I think, what, you, you don't like fisheye shots either? No, I'm kidding, don't use a fisheye. Um, but that's kind of at least like my, my metric for if I continue to shoot the same style of images, that if I'm noticing that couples are never posting them on Instagram or they're never ending up in the album or on Facebook or whatever it might be, that I slowly kind of dial those back and I start creating images that people like. And I know that you have to have some sort of artistic thing alive in you and, and you got to create for yourself in some points but we're also in the market of creating images that our couples want and if I'm wasting a half hour trying to get those like awesome dance party shots that they're never going to use I would rather just focus my time and energy on something that they're actually going to use and that's actually going to be valuable for them since we're hired to be there for the wedding day. All right, that about wraps it up. My one flash is off to the right there where you can see it going off. And the other one is kind of hidden up with the DJ light. I think that the, again, like the less obtrusive I can be, the better. And here is the absolute last frame that I took at this wedding before we departed. And that's just that one single light lighting them up and a little bit of direct flash coming in at a very, very low power, including the DJ lights. So usually at this time, I either set up an off-camera flash or I have a flash on top of my camera. Um, with a gel to match whatever the light bulbs are. So in this case, they're incandescent, so I'd have that orange CTO gel on top of my flash. Uh, but because of the courtyard lights, it gives this like beautiful, perfect, even lighting all over everything. So I'm not gonna use a flash, I'm just gonna shoot this. I can punch the ISO to like at least 6400 before I actually get in trouble. Um, currently, I'm down around 2000, which is more than low enough. Um, so I'm just doing the speeches that way and then um, once the first dance is started, I'm going to set up an off-camera flash. I don't know if I'll use it, but I'll, it's nice to just have the option because sometimes you get some really good um, quality and direction of light from it that you don't get from the overhead um, soft lights. So those are my thoughts on this reception. We will be setting up an off-camera light, basically putting this on a light stand. Keep my studio in my trunk, but you have to unlock the car, I guess, to access the trunk or so I've been told. It only opens halfway. Don't buy a Mercedes. It's AMG, garbage. Um, but the trunk does close if you do this, right? I missed it, do it again. 
So we're gonna go set this up and I have this CTO gel on top of it. Um, and then I have this cable that's way too long. Um, I'm gonna hook a pocket wizard into this and a pocket wizard on top of my camera. And I'm gonna set this up and point it at a wall or something that's white um, because the ceiling is non-existent here. But if I point it at a wall or like a column like this, I'll get this nice kind of um, three-dimensional light thrown onto the couple during their first dance. Maybe, we'll find out. So the light is very nice in here now, very warm. Um, if you're using an ungelled flash, you would get a very strange, complex um, color to correct for, uh, depending on where you were standing. But if you have a CTO gel on your flash and all these lights are the same color, it's gonna look good. And this is exactly how you set it up. Step one, put the flash in. Step two, turn the flash on. Step three, plug the flash in. Turn the pocket wizard on. That'll do. I never use TTL for anything, so I'm gonna set this up manual and I'm gonna set it at one slash 32 power. And I'm gonna bounce it probably off of here. Maybe there. Looking for the optimal spread and white wall hit. Um, so now instead of just regular nice light being out here, they're gonna get hit with this nice three-dimensional light. Surprise lights, Tim. I'm gonna put this down and make sure it is hitting you guys. So I'm gonna have you facing, um, rotate like 90 degrees, so you're doing that exactly, but. Yeah, still face each other. Right, right like that's perfect. And then move kind of as close to this side as you kind of can without getting your dress actually wet. So like somewhere right there. So we are doing a little uh, backlit photo shot first. Um, so they're up on the balcony. I have my flash set to one slash 128th. And they are up top. And my pocket wizard is firing and lighting them up nicely. Um, and I'm gonna find a good spot. Figured I'd put the 7200 on just so that uh, I have ultimate ability to zoom and do whatever I need. This looks super good. I actually like it way better without the flash on. So they're gonna come down, we're gonna do a similar, but more straight backlit situation with them kind of in the arches here and me in the snow. Um, speaking of that, I should probably put my 24 on. This is actually my favorite part of the day is this blue hour. Everybody, uh, they prefer the golden hour. I prefer the weirdness of this. So I appreciate it when my couples send me sample shots of things that they would like to do. And this time of day is one of them. And I'm pretty much just gonna have you guys in the center of this, uh, in the center right here. And yeah, so if you wanna be right here and you can face each other. Cool, super happy. It's a bit loud in here, but I have my SB, what is this, 700, Pocket Wizard 3, Pocket Wizard 3 on top of my camera as well. Uh, one off-camera flash, and I'm putting it in this corner over here. I always want to shoot into the people. Um, I don't want to be shooting against this, uh, this blank wall over here, um, or the DJ, or the screen, or anything like that. Um, so if I have everything out of focus back there, it looks all nice, candlelit. I don't love the exit signs, but unfortunately, that's something that I might have to deal with in a few photos. Um, and we have our first test subject for the off-camera flash right now. Let's turn everything on. I use manual controls for everything and I'm pretty much just gonna point it up here into this corner so it gets a little more direction and we're gonna test it.
All right, and what I want to do is I want to set my ISO to balance for the room. So right now if I shoot, so right now if I shoot a photo over there, it's well lit. And then with the flash added in to just illuminate the subject. You can even bring the flash down a little bit. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That's some good test shots. All right, for intros, I'm going to put my flash on this side of the dance floor so that I can illuminate some of their faces. Actually, I'm just gonna use this gigantic screen right here. That looks like a good softbox. And now, my small flash has become a softbox of that size. Actually, that's gonna fail because they're all gonna look the opposite way when they come in. So let's put it over here. That looks good. Just point it at the ceiling. It is on 1 16th power, 2 50th, probably come down to, that looks good. We're gonna get things started with introductions. So first off, let's welcome our bridesmaids this evening. Let's welcome Ashley. Coming to this door. Kristen! And the man of honor, Amanda! Sometimes things change. So ladies and gentlemen, it's the time you've all been waiting for. What door do we think? Out of your seats and welcome for the first time as husband and wife.
Where are you going, Tim? So this room, as Lindsay warned, is a little bit weird. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an off-camera flash right here because it's going to point up at this white. Um, whereas if I was bouncing a flash off the ceiling over here or over here, it would not really do much. But there's a flash right here. It's going to illuminate everyone at the head table perfectly and whoever's speaking. And this is usually the part of the day that I talk to the DJ and I ask him to only turn on white lights or no lights during first dances. And I forgot to do that today. And now, if you would please uh, get on your feet, we gotta make a little bit more excitement for this next couple of events. Here's a PSA. If you're using an off-camera flash, uh, change the batteries before because my recycle time was not being as fast as I wanted it to be. So I turned my flash down to 1 16th and had to bump my ISO up, took a test frame there, and it all worked out. But it would have been a little bit easier to just change the batteries at a non-critical time and not have to find that out three quarters of the way through introductions. So um, that's end of my PSA. Got one light over here. Bounced off the white. Doing photos. Narrating. Uh oh. With just one off camera light, you can really create some great images um, that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to get just using a flash on top of my camera. All right, so as I said earlier that I forgot to tell the DJ to only turn on white lights or no lights during their first dance. And once they're on, it's kind of too late. I can't really um, go up and tell them to do that. So now I have to work around the conditions that I'm given, um, which means usually kind of using them like the sun and placing the lights behind them um, to give them a little bit of a halo, but also to keep the weird colors off of their faces that of the side that I'm on. So it worked out. I also try to include key family members. His mom is off to the left here and his dad is off to the right and their significant others are beside them. I would way rather do it this way than accidentally include somebody's date in the background of important images like this. I thought the video was done. I put in the music and it faded it in. And no, it's not done. Uh, new venue, more difficult venue, really only one spot to bounce off the ceiling and it's way too far away from the podium. So I'm actually bouncing off of a blind. It's a, it's a white blind that they pulled down over the window and it gives me good enough light to work. Um, it's not the most ideal scenario. Another spot could be across the dance floor, as you can see right there off those walls that are a little more white and gray. Uh, as the ceiling, it's just, it's dark wood and it doesn't reflect a whole lot of light. I want to get my light as close to them as possible, and this is kind of working out okay. Again, wedding photography and I guess off-camera flash is just about doing the best you can within any given situation. There are definitely pockets of light where they look the best and they maybe don't look as good as they possibly could, so I'm just waiting for those sections like that right there and taking the images that I need and then not really doing too much in the times that I know the images won't be the best like right there. Hey, don't kill my pizza dreams, yo I don't wanna kill you and your dreams, yo So, don't kill my pizza dreams, yo Uh, something cappuccino Kappa, 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 cappuccino Kappa, 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 cappuccino Kappa, 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 cappuccino Kappa, chino, kappa, chino and now that uh, everything is set up in the reception space, I'm going to come in and, and do candids. I'm not, they're not self-aware. I'm not, I'm not going to do candids of the details, but I'm going to photograph them. Here's a quick tour of all of the colors and textures in this room. I want to run an off-camera flash. I want to bounce more light into this room, but everything is either dark gray or wood toned, which really doesn't lend itself to bouncing a flash off of it. The idea is essentially turn that small flash head, bounce it off something white or light gray and get a lot of coverage and make it into a big softbox. The only white thing in this room is this little poster right here. So I'm, I'm bouncing off it and I know they're going to do their first dance right in front of it. So it's actually, it kind of works out pretty well for the entrance and trance entrance. Uh, it's actually kind of hard. Like if I was standing down at the audience, I'd get kind of this just blank gray wall, which is kind of fine from here. There's a lot of different things going on, but I felt that this was the much better shot and I'm still leaving my bounce on the, uh, the fireplace and just bringing a little bit of light back into the room. But when they're on this platform, it kind of works out a little bit better. I thought that closer is always better when it comes to photography that if I shoot this with my 35, it's going to be awesome. But turns out 85 is, uh, it just is better overall, totally entirely. 
the, for the most part, you have pretty good light. We're moving into a section now where it's going to be the awkward mixed light from the bulbs above uh, that's incandescent and nice and warm with the kind of bluer daylight outside uh, for a little bit. It's going to be awkward, but then as soon as everything is just incandescent, it's going to get a lot better for the speeches and it's just going to be totally fine again. When you are in these challenging conditions, you kind of isolate styles of light. So if it's incandescent on the left side of someone's face, you photograph just the left side or just the right side and never try to kind of mix them. Uh, on skin tones specifically, wide shots, it's okay. But for close-ups, it's better just to be on one color of light. Now that it is nighttime or mostly nighttime and it's primarily incandescent light, it makes my life a lot easier. I can just switch to incandescent uh, white balance mode, which you see on my camera there. And uh, yeah. Very easy. You can also just kind of go around the entire room now and get good shots of everybody in this lighting style. Boom, no transition, just first dance. So this is a bit of a challenging setup because if I'm standing with the audience and taking pictures of them, they're just against this kind of weird white wall. Uh, so the ideal angle is kind of this way. Um, if I'm pointing kind of towards a DJ over that way, he's gonna be in the shots. If I'm pointing the opposite direction, it's just a door. So I really did have to kind of um, be a little bit more in the way than I usually would be here. And those last shots, I'm bouncing my flash off of that big white curtain to give a little bit more direction to the light. I then tried to frame out the DJ and everything that I didn't want in the shot by going like this, and then headed off to my dinner. This is my seat at tonight's wedding. I don't know why I had to put the table in the center of the room. This might be the funniest place I've ever sat for a dinner alone. Great. Got bread. This is perfect. All right, let's get into this. Uh, I'm not really sure what it is. There's some, some oil down at the base. When I go into a room like this, the room that's over there, um, I'm not setting up any off-camera lights, and I'm not using an on-camera light today because the quality of light is actually really good. Even though there are some random hot lights, um, it's actually pretty good quality overall once it actually gets down kind of to this level. Um, and all of the linens are all kind of brighter, so it is reflecting a little bit of light back up. So I'm very happy just to use the ambient light that's in that room. I think it is a lot better and a lot less obtrusive than setting up lights to essentially achieve potentially the same style of light, but just maybe to shoot it at a thousand ISO less. My couples and I really don't care too much about grain. Um, like cameras are so good now that you can literally shoot at like 16,000 ISO and it's still a usable image. You just gotta make sure you get it right in camera. It's just tomatoes. This, this, it's just tomatoes. I was expecting some sort of like caprizi surprise inside these tomatoes, but it's just tomatoes on a big tomato. I feel like I'm in Italy now that I'm eating these beautiful tomatoes. Great view. Ocean, Mediterranean Sea out here. Thanks for coming to the wedding today. Hope you enjoyed it. This is a style shoot that you might have seen a few days ago and I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of the off-camera flash section of it. So I'm gonna do my best uh, to kind of angle it down a little bit here. And we're getting some nice soft window light, so I'm really just kind of adding a little bit of complementary light. I'm not trying to overpower the scene, or maybe I am. I don't know. We'll experiment with a few different things and see what works out best. Really what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose for what's going on, and then I'm going to add this in slowly. So I'm going to start it at its lowest intensity down at 1 slash 128. Looks pretty nice. I think I'm kind of happy with that. It's also important to move your light around. Usually if I walked into this scene, I would maybe have an off-camera flash set up bouncing off of this big white area here and coming back into the scene. Uh, what I did with the softbox there was technically correct, but I like the texture of bouncing off this wall um, even better than that. You're not supposed to have your camera strap in the shot, or maybe you are. Maybe, they, maybe that's the new thing. Little, little tiny camera strap in the corner there. Texture three-dimensionality. If this was a normal wedding day, I would have this flash, just no modifier, probably bouncing off of one of these walls off in the far distance and powered up a little bit so that I was able to kind of fill the space and balance out for the garage door light coming in the side. But because it is a styled shoot, I set this up and I like the light a lot. 
I really do prefer the look of natural light. So in this case, I'm using natural light as the main light and I'm using this off camera flash to really add that like wrap around texture that you see there. Uh, I really, really love the way that this image came together and using natural light first is I think most important for any wedding shooter or um, really photographer that just wants to be able to best use their environment uh, and then figuring out where to add off camera flash to complement that. Thank you so much for watching the off-camera flash video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them in the comments below and I will get, do my best to get back to you. And if I don't, somebody likely can answer questions that uh, basically off-camera flash is, there are a lot of different variables, a lot of different modifiers, magnet mod, all kinds of different products. Um, I haven't used all of them. What I do use is kind of the, the simple stuff you see in front of me. And people are usually pretty good about giving you an answer if you uh, do have any questions in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again uh, two days from now on Sunday. I suppose. Yeah, right? Sunday? Today's Friday. See you then.